Hey friends, welcome back and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Um, so this is Thanksgiving morning and of course um, I'm cooking two meats, doing prime rib and turkey today and uh, I need to set a drum kit up for a recording session because why not multitask? Um, so in order to do that in the most efficient way in terms of the holiday and company and people coming over, I have decided to do it in the basement. So this is a wide open basement with no acoustic treatment. So we're gonna use this as a little bit of an experiment uh, because, well, I don't have the space because as I'm sure you probably know, or maybe you don't, I use my living room as the live room for recording. And today that is not an option because Thanksgiving. So in order to multitask, I need to set a drum kit up down here and get it mic'd up uh, and ready to go. So as soon as my friends come over for the after Thanksgiving jam, we can just come right downstairs into the basement. So um, as far as acoustics go, I think I'm gonna put the drum kit right here and fire it towards either the back wall or the back corner. Maybe it'll be cool. Maybe it'll sound like crap. Anyway, let's get this thing set up. All right, so thanks for your patience with the extremely OCD uh, drum kit set up there. I still kind of don't know where everything is in the house. Um, I never quite moved back in from when I moved back from New York. So I have stuff in the living room and the basement and the studio and all kinds of stuff. So uh, anyway, here is the drum kit. And then here is the drummer's perspective as to where we're aiming, acoustically speaking, for at least trying to get some type of decent sound. I think that it's actually gonna sound pretty good down here. The only thing that I'm sort of worried about is um, I can hear uh, Gina and the cat running around upstairs and the neighbor's dog barking. So A, that means they're definitely gonna hear me. So uh, more, of a, more of a need to get it in a few takes um, so I don't drive everybody crazy. Um, but anyway, here's, uh, here's the drum kit. Uh, so the kick drum is a 24 by 18 Tama Star Classic Birch. Uh, the snare drum is a custom built model, actually. Um, this is, uh, there was a guy in Indiana that was called Full Metal Jacket Percussion that built this for me probably in 2014. Um, this snare drum weighs 40 pounds. Uh, it's built out of a, a half inch thick piece of steel pipe. It's six and a half by 14. It's meant to sort of knock off a Keplinger kind of thing. And, it's a really, really amazing drum. And actually, I should say, it's not painted white. That's just primer. I was going to do like a cool artistic thing. My sister's a painter. I was going to have her do some cool Keith Haring thing on there. But I actually like the way it looks with the, uh, the, the white shell and the black lug, so I never painted it. Um, the toms are Oak Custom toms. This is a 12 by 11 rack tom. This is an 8 by 8. I never put up the 8 by 8. I figured, let's get crazy. It's sort of an 80 session. Let's do that. Um, Floor Tom is a 16 by 16. That matches the kick drum. It's a Star Classic Birch. Um, I don't know what it is. I hate when drum kits match, so I always like to have some mongoloid looking drum kit for recording. I don't know. Um, and this is really a super cool drum. This is a DW pancake drum. Uh, so this is a 20 inch drum, uh, and it's like two inches thick kind of thing, but it's basically, I, like, I call it an analog 808. It just gives you this really cool subby thing. I always wanted a Tamagong drum, and uh, it's huge and expensive, so I never, never bought one. Um, symbols, symbols for the session here. We've got a 18-inch Sound Formula Thin China. I've had that symbol since 1999. Whoops. This is a Peisty 20, 21-inch rye. The brand or the model is a 20. It's a 20, 21-inch uh, symbol. Have a Peisty 17 inch 20 crash and a Peisty 18 inch dark energy crash. And then these are my reverb find for COVID. These are brand new, new old stock sound formula 14 inch heavy hi hats. I really love the Peisty sound formula line. Maybe it's just uh, maybe it's just the 90s and me talking, but cool symbol. So anyway, enough drum talk. Let's get some mics up on this.
All right, so we've got the drum kit mic'd up, and here is what that looks like. So in the kick drum, we have a single Audix D6. Um, you know, I go back and forth about multi-kick mics. Uh, I, sometimes I throw a sub-kick up, sometimes I throw a kick out and a sub-kick and a kick in, but oftentimes I find myself, even when I put those mics up, just using the D6 and putting a little 808 underneath it for some weight. Um, it's such a big kick drum. This is a 24 by 18 kick drum that it, it gives me all the low end that I really need with that one mic. And the D6, because it has such an aggressive EQ uh, curve built into it, it also gives me what I'm looking for. I have yet to find a kick drum mic that I like more than that. So um, anyway, <laughs> there's that. Uh, so before we go around to the, the snare, I'll just show you the toms here. Um, just 421, super, super standard. Um, on this little 8-inch tom, um, I've got an ATM450, uh, which is, again, one of my favorite microphones. I carry these in my work box all the time. Uh, they are a wonderful problem solver of a microphone. Um, I also have an ATM450 on the hi-hat. So for those of you who are not hip with these particular mics, they are a side address condenser microphone. Um, very, very useful, especially in this particular instance where things are a bit tight. Um, you know, if you've got, uh, if you're using traditional hi-hat mics like a 451 or something like that, um, you know, it would probably work with the cymbals high. Uh, for recording, I, I really like high drums and high cymbals. It is, you know, 1987 in my mind all the time, um, but it really is uh, helpful as ter in terms of getting microphones around. Um, on the snare drum, we have got a Bayer M88. And on the floor tom, another 421. And then hiding out under the gong drum is an SM7. So generally, on the gong drum, I like a D112. Um, that's usually my, my go-to mic. Uh, I've had the SM7 down here, and I thought, hey, what the heck? Let's try that out. Um, overheads. These, I, again, another overhead mic that I have really uh, haven't been able to beat is the AKG 451. I really, really like these as overheads. They're very gentle on the cymbals. Um, they have a nice, a nice smooth kind of feel for them. So, you know, overhead drum mics are an oft debated subject. Um, I, I go back and forth. I like them uh, close to the cymbals. Um, I, I don't want a lot of room in my overhead mics. Um, you know, you get so much room and so much cymbal um, from your room mics, obviously, duh, not just a clever name, uh, that you, you want spot mics on the cymbals. Uh, so again, I, you know, I kind of point them at the snare drum. Sometimes I'm into that now. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I'm not. Like if it's live, uh, I don't want any of the drums in, in the overheads. I just want them as spot mics for cymbals because I am leaning so heavy on the, on the direct sound. But for recording, um, I do like to point them at the snare drum. You know, there is the, as we walk over to the uh, room mics here, there is, of course, the argument about phase, right? Everybody is always like, oh, no, you have to point your overheads at the snare because that is the argument about phase. But you know what? In post-production, uh, we have DAWs now, so you can uh, line them up. So generally what I do in post-production is take the snare drum track and line everything up to that, look at the waveforms and make sure they're in phase. And if they're not, I'll invert the polarity. And if not, uh, everything is good to go. But I do time align all the microphones to the snare drum. That is, uh, there you go. There's your recording tip of the day. Um, so I'm running an MS um, on, on, um, on the room here. Uh, we've got uh, the bottom mic is on Omni. The, uh, the top mic is figure eight. So those are the drum mics and the setup. Just trying to give you guys some idea here about what everything looks like. All right, I guess we'll uh, listen to the track and see what this all sounds like together. <laughs> 